Hello, hello, this is Arcades, and welcome to a uh, bit of a discussion video here on Stormworks Build and Rescue. And uh, yeah, I, I, I know this bit zoomed out. Um, so, what you see here, this is my oil refinery I built for a uh, career, and it is on the workshop. Well, recently on stream, I was trying to work on it and get it working. Well, actually, it wasn't this particular, I was trying to make a mobile refinery. Uh, for reasons for my career playthrough on stream and I uh, ran into some issues and I came out to this thing to try to solve them so I could get a different perspective and I ended up finding out a few things and um, let's just say if you running into problems with your refinery maybe some of these things that I came across to solve my issues might be solving yours so uh, yeah so this will be a bit of an interesting discussion about how to try to solve some refining issues. Yeah. Okay, so I hope that you like what you watch. I hope you enjoy what you see. If you do, remember to like, subscribe, leave a comment, tell me what you think. Helps out the channel immensely. And uh, yeah, let's get into this. Okay, so um, like I said, the problem was, is what I was wanting to do is I was trying to make a mobile refinery. I was having issues trying to get to work and I couldn't figure it out. So I decided to come to this thing and see, uh, pull this thing out and see how it works and see if it works straight off the bat. Now this version is before I made the fixes I made. So I will pull out the fixes later and show you, but I'm going to show you some of the things I found out. So first of all, let's just get this thing fired up as it, it oh, it is. <laughs> I already have it started up. Uh, okay, so as you can see, temperature's going up. I've got the distillery temperature. This thing has two tanks on it, but there is a small issue. Yeah, apparently, uh, there's a problem with the thing, and it's not splitting in half, like, or, you know, it's not splitting the two tanks. So that was the first thing I had to figure out, and apparently, in the middle of all that... Apparently, so since so since it was saying that these tanks are now one tank, because I have this lower tank, which is the distilling tank, this one is supposed to be the one that heats up and separates, turns the oil into jet and diesel. And then this upper tank is a bulk tank. It stores all the excess oil. And when I go to activate it, it opens this little watertight door and it allows the oil to seep through into the lower tank as it's being drawn out. Problem is, is it sees this as one tank. And I think I figured out why. Or I did figure out why. Because it considers this is no longer watertight in this position. Uh, I didn't experiment to see if they gave it, so I just ended up moving this up. And that gave me my uh, twin tank status. But before then, I actually was watching, before I made that fix, I was watching the temperature increase. And it seems to work really well. And I was actually happy with that. But I wasn't happy with the tank being, you know, one big tank. Because larger tanks take longer to heat up. So I wanted to split it back into the smaller tank and the bigger tank setup that I had going. And I had to go fix that. So, let me make that adjustment real quick. And there was one other problem. <laughs> you remember what I told you about uh, the previous video? Yeah. And in the case of this problem, I have a... <laughs> I have a, uh, a little sling that was supposed to allow me to lower me down so I could... And up, so I could prepare... Repair the... Um, tank on the inside well here's something else i found out and this is what led me to some of my solutions is when i want to go in here to return it i realized that this thing is majorly pre pressurized from all the air that spawns in initially with the uh tank and it got compressed by the spawned in oil that i have with the uh, xml edited spawner that spawns me uh, oil in the tank and as you can see it's taking a while to 
purge all that excess, which it's now purged. So now I got to come in here and uh, use this to return it. <laughs> uh, and all I did was to fix that issue is I ended up just grabbing this block here, cutting it, pasting it back, and that's all I need to take care of that. Now I can respawn it as I want to, because I'll just look at that block and just say return it. So, uh, so anyways, as I was saying, I found out through some experimenting that this wasn't isn't watertight anymore in this manner. So I just ended up grabbing it and just pulling out of its place and just moving it up and then sealing that area down below one. Okay, so I got it moved and it's now set up and ready to rock and roll. So respawn it and went to go recheck. Uh, okay, so after I got it spawned back in, this is where the interesting stuff started happening. And so I got it in here and now as you can see, it's now, there are two separate tanks instead of one big tank of like 85,000. Now the big difference here that I noticed, I was like, okay, we got everything here. Let's go ahead and start this up. Now the thing was, is that I was originally spawning with just the oil tank and it was dropping and it's supposed to, like I said, it's supposed to go through that little door into the distillation tank. But then I noticed a slight problem. It started draining the distillation tank back into the bulk tank. I'm like, that shouldn't be happening. Like, it shouldn't be. And I, I so I put the oil spawner in that tank too, so it would maintain it and everything started working. But I'm like, still doesn't feel right. Something still feels off. And then I come over here and I look. All right, that's a distillery tank temperature. That's doing good. Okay, we're at 98. And then I come down here, the bulk tank, which is literally eight times bigger, almost eight times bigger, is heating up faster than the distillery tank. The distillery tank has three furnaces on it. And as you can see, you know, they're going at a pretty good speed. Flow rate. So why is it, and I was just trying to figure this out. It's like, why is that flowing so fast, but heating up slower than the bulk tank? Well, the fun part is we got to go into the bulk tank and look at this real quick. Okay, so I, so I no clipped into the bulk tank. You can see we got here and then I came to look at this and it's showing a flow of 144 and I'm like, you know, it's showing this nearly 140 plus flow, but here's the thing. There's no pumps on this. It was literally just to sit here and to heat up the tank at a very slow rate. So the idea was, is that when the oil would go into the lower tank, it would cool down that tank. So the this warmer would end up raise, slowly raising the temperature of the oil in here so that it wouldn't cause the oil in the distillation tank that is still in there to cool down too much or cause the jet fuel to, and the oil to, re, or jet fuel and the diesel to recombine, to cool down and thus recombine into oil. So, you know, it was just there, but it's still gaining heat faster so um yeah and then we're looking at this it's like how well i think i figured it out what it was it was actually like grabbing the air that was spawned in the tank and it's pulling that through the line that's why it's giving it the higher rate but the actual fluid flow was lower so then i tried methods of draining the air out of that tank and I think I, I just couldn't find a good way to drain it out. But as you can see, the bulk tank is still gaining 
is still like a higher temperature than that. And it's a much larger tank. So after that, I started messing with the pumps and all that to see if that would help the uh, refinery at all. Until finally, I just said, you know what, screw it. I've got a weird um, thing I'm going to try. And let me show you that. So after all the th attempts I tried to increase the flow, I messed with the pumps. I messed with a lot of things. I just said, F it finally. And I deleted all the pumps. You know, all that. But yeah, I, uh, I use the electric furnaces because basically they're free on a oil platform. So you really don't need to do anything for them. Okay, so I brought these in here. I just basically pasted them down. And I just added air filters on their edges. So yeah, I just did this in this manner. So I added a filter on each of these ports and I left it that. Okay, so this isn't exactly an exact replication of what I did, but these, these were the steps I went through to figure some of this stuff out. Now, now you can see my distillery temperature is now actually completely trouncing the speed of the bulk tank in its temperature gate. I mean, look, it's already at 140. It's already halfway there. So I was like, okay, so we got a working system here. And as you can see, this is going at 144. And then we got these going, they're also doing like 140. Now, I didn't know, understand completely why, and I still don't understand why as much, but at least I know the correlative changes and what I had to to get to that point where I could figure it out. So I went and decided, it's like, okay, so this is working. I decided I also wanted to be able to uh, be able to manage pressure in the tanks. So I was like, okay, well, we need to add though we need to add some pressure relief on the tank. So yeah, I added four of these pressure relief ports right here, gas relief filters. And that was pretty much it straight up. So that way it would just let the gas out. Cause I was like, okay, we'll let the gas out. So hopefully allow things to move easier. Well, had another symptom come up of the issue. So as you can see, these are all putting out like, it's like a total of like a hundred liters a second of air that it's pushing out. We got one atmosphere in there. Now we come to inside. And you'll notice that the pressure is slowly going down, but as the pressure goes down, so does the coolant in and out speed. Well, this area is because, you know, it's got all that up there. It's, this is slowly, it is going down, but not at the same speed. And it took me a while to figure out there was a correlation between the pressure and the speed output of those pumps. Or the speed output of those furnaces. Okay. So since that pressure is being lost, I noticed this, it's going down. We don't have any jet fuel. It's not getting hot enough in the distillery tank yet. It's not hot enough the bulk tank, but if you look at the bulk tank, it's actually going up. So the pressure in the distillery tank is higher than the bulk tank now, and it's literally pushing oil back into the bulk tank, which is cooler, and it's cooling it down. So I was like, okay, pressure, I realized that pressure was starting to affect the system on the speed and everything. So I couldn't let this drain a pressure even as it was draining oil, because as it drains oil, once the conversion process starts, the pressure is going to go down.
which means the furnace movement that that flow through the furnaces is also going to slow down so i devised decided on a system or to add a system to keep the pressure in the tanks so uh let's bring that up okay so i've already got it started it's already running and as you can see we got a listed pressure gauge right here we've got that there we got the oil listed in the tank got the oil, what's listed in the distillery tank as well as the pressure in here now i've got a thing up there you know i got i got a way to measure i'm using the barometers to measure the thing and as soon as this gets up to temperature it will start producing and i think they even increase the speed of the conversion process so i set up the system so it would maintain the pressure between both tanks basically and because they're actually using a physical door to connect the two ways it's using the mechanics they recently added you know with the door or you know updated that movement between the doors and such to actually create to balance the pressure between both tanks so they are working like they should as you can see it's actually being drained into instead of being drained out of However, I admit, I kind of don't want <laughs> the bulk tank to get too hot. Okay, so you see the temperature of the distilling tank right now? It is 294. Technically not hot enough. Um, I currently have jet and diesel both being made at this moment. Which, at the time, and what I'm thinking is the case now, and you can see, this thing totally <laughs> up to 300. Um, the, the, the big thing to note here is I think, and this is what I'm guessing is going on, is that now fluid has actual, its own temperature from gas and from the room. So, while this might be the temperature of the room with the with the probe the actual fluid temperature is different <laughs> from that and thus causes the change and such um that is my hypothesis that is my theory that is what i'm educated guess on probably what's happening because that's the only thing that can really before as soon as it would hit 300, I could look over here and it starts turning, starts dumping. So you notice, you can see this is flickering. That's from the oil coming into the tank, from the bulk tank. And because it has that equalized pressure, it's not going all over the place. However, I did notice since the bulk tank does get hot enough, it actually starts cooking, uh, starts making jet, diesel, jet and diesel in the tank. So eventually the bulk tank will get hot enough, it will start making the oil itself as well, which, um, it, or making jet and diesel. Yeah, because you can see bulk tank storage warmer. Look at how hot that is. That's just one. That's just one furnace by itself, and it just keeps getting hotter and hotter. I've seen that thing as hot as like five hundred something. I need to readjust those dials. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think they're set for that value. But as you can see, they're just it's just cranking through it. Now if I come out to the um these things. Uh 
you can see, 2.27 each. I have four of them. So that's like a combined total of like, you know, uh, what, eight, nine liters a second. And I had somebody in my chat say they got up to like 25 liters a second of conversion rate. That, you know, 25 liters of oil getting converted into jet and oil per second. So, yeah, things be uh, definitely different now. So, uh, I guess, yeah, I guess the TLDR of all this is that for what I did to get that fixed, to get the distillation process fixed, was to main a high pressure. Now, the thing is, I did try 60. 60 seemed to be the cap that those pumps could generate in here. And when I did that, it brought the speed down to zero. Like, uh, like there was no movement at all. I got the pressure in both tanks to 60 atmospheres, and it just stopped moving. Because there was, I, I don't know what was up with it or whatever, but for whatever reason, that movement that, you, that I was showing of like 140 something liters a second uh from the furnaces here yeah that and even here it's now saying that i think that's combining the gas as well <laughs> which i it's which is fine i mean it's working it's doing its job but if you get to 60, it drops it down to like minimum pressure, you know, minimum flow. I mean, even at, you know, even at this low flow rate, guess what? That's still way faster. <laughs> oh. Oh, uh, but yeah. I do plan to finish fixing this up to get it working. I still need to test out the load and unload stations to make sure they're working right. I've still got to get pressurization in this managed properly because as this fills up it's going to be creating pressure and too much pressure will slow down these things because it can't push against the pressure in here so i'm gonna to have to find a way to keep the pressure on this thing down low so that there's no issues with it you know taking it from here and putting it into here Right now, my only solution at this at this time of the making this video is just to literally just open this up, and that'll release any pressure that might be in the tank. So, yeah, you're gonna definitely have to work on managing those uh, pressure systems. So this should be interesting. So, because <laughs> uh, I was already thinking that one problem with these unload stations. You know, this unloads from a truck to put it into the bulk tank. And if that's sitting at like 50-something pressure, I'm going to have to pressure... Either I'm going to have to depressurize this thing, shut it down and depressurize it so I can load it. Or I'm going to have to pressurize the truck tank as high as I can get it so it has a greater pressure and just pushes through all this. And I'm wondering if I even need pumps afterwards. Okay, so in summary, with everything that I was saying here, um, yeah. So if you're having problems with the refining process, try adding pressure instead of so trying to get rid of it or leaving it be. I found a sweet spot in my system right around 52 to 53 for this place. I built a mobile refinery, I got it working, and I found the sweet spot was about 51 to 52 for it it's it seems to be and that's and it's not about how many tanks either too because this one has two tanks you know like i said the bulk and the store and the actual distillation tank but my mobile refinery has one tank it's just one contained space and it works just fine once you get it up to pressure so um yeah so if you're having issues with fluids or such this might be the solution you need to get it to work. I'm not saying this might be the solution that fixes your machinery, but it's definitely something you can investigate and find out to see if it is a related issue. So, yeah. All right. Uh, hope you had a good time. Hope you enjoyed what you watch. If you did, you know the deal. You know the spiel. 
This is Arcades, signing out. Have yourself a good day.